Well, grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. It was the summer of 2017, and I was driving on Swinton Avenue, approaching Northeast 22nd Street. And I was doing all I could, gripping the steering wheel, trying to muster the strength not to cry. But the tears came gushing down anyway, and I began to whimper. And as I approached the stop sign, that whimpering became a cry, God help me. See, what had happened is I had just left my house that morning and the AC was broken and temperatures were reaching somewhere in the mid 80s when I left. It was one of many things that summer that had broken or had been causing problems. We had other appliances fail us, refrigerator, um, our garage door opener. We even had a termite infestation. All of these things were mounting up and happening and I did not have the financial means to pay for it. And thus my prayer, God help me. Well right now in the economy that we're in, that may have been you at one point in these past few months, or maybe this past week, or perhaps even just this morning. You have found yourself also saying that prayer, God help me. Well that is also this poor widow who we read about in 2 Kings today. She was a woman who was in debt, seriously, to the point where her creditors were coming to take her sons into slavery. And so she found herself going to this prophet, Elisha, and asking him, help me. And my message for you today is that God in the end did help this poor widow, this single mom. God helped her through the direction of a prophet. For all of us today who find ourselves crying and asking God for help, I want you to know that God does indeed help. And he helps us through the direction of a prophet. You see, in 3,000 years, nothing has changed. There are still creditors who come after us with nasty grams and notices wanting their money. And there are still people like this widow, like you and me, who are asking and begging God for help. We today still find ourselves struggling with debt and credit. Apparently, some 64 million Americans are right now people who have a credit collections in their debt report, in their credit report. And apparently, the average American owes about $92,727 in loans, mortgages, and student loans, car payments, and credit card balances. And then this past year, they're saying that credit card debt is up 13% as people are trying to cover the higher costs by using their credit cards. Very little has changed in the past 3,000 years since this widow came to Elisha, Elisha asking for help. This week, I got a phone call very troubling phone call from a single mom crying. She had been evicted because her rent went up. Her car was repossessed and she was afraid that someone was going to take away her two children. Very little has changed. But the same God who spoke to that widow is also speaking to us today. The same God who provided a prophet for this widow with direction and what she should do is also today, 2022, giving us direction as we find ourselves crying out for help. When we cry out to him, 
God saves us. He saves us by giving us direction through a prophet. Now still, 3,000 years later, very little has changed. God is still giving us direction through a prophet. And yet, our response has not also changed from that of Israel. This one woman listens to what the prophet says, and she does it, and God provides for her. But the rest of Israel um, did not always listen to the prophets. In fact, um, some people tried to kill the prophets because they did not want to hear what they wanted to say. People rather follow other gods or follow other directions rather than listen to what God is trying to tell us, the direction he's trying to give us through his own chosen people. We Christians today are not all that different from Israel. See, apparently a survey by the Barna Group found that, well, only 9% of Christians actually believe that the Bible is accurate and relevant. Just 9%. So God is giving us direction, but a lot of us are not really wanting to hear it. Because Israel did not follow that direction, they were about to be carried off into slavery because of their debt. But their debt was toward God. So everybody, I want you to understand that that is the real problem. Man's greatest problem is not our debt to our lenders and to the credit card companies. Our greatest problem is our debt to God himself. Because we cannot pay that astronomical and insurmountable debt, we are also enslaved to sin. Paul, the apostle, called himself as one sold into slavery to sin. And so are we when we do not have the words of the prophet speaking to us. So God has given us direction when we find ourselves crying out to help. The question is, will we follow the direction that he is giving us? Not much has changed in 3,000 years. We have the same credit card debt creditors. We have the same difficulty in hearing what the prophet has to say. But we have the same God who is speaking to us, speaking to us by giving us direction through a prophet. Even now, God is giving us direction through a prophet. The prophet's name is Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Understand, the Christ is prophet, priest, and king. He is king because he is still giving life-giving, life-saving direction to all of his people. The Christ is the greatest of prophets, greater than Moses, greater than Elijah, greater than Elisha. All the other prophets are deputies of this Jesus. Christ is the prophet of greater promises and greater direction. He is the one who has come to give us greater treasures. It says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are those who thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. In Jesus the prophet, we are filled with greater treasures and eternal life for what he has done for us. Jesus is the prophet who gives us the direction to follow him.
Jesus says to his disciples, if anyone would come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. What can a man give for his life? It's not silver and gold. It is the precious blood of Jesus Christ that he gave for us on the cross. Because God has exchanged all of his treasures for what we had for our debt, our debt is forgiven. In Christ Jesus, we have the prophet who gives us direction on how our debt, our debt toward God, our greatest debt, is actually cleared and done away with, and we are given everlasting life. Oddly, this was the direction that God would later give me when I found myself on Swinton Avenue crying out for help. God would later tell me to take up my cross and follow him. In Jesus, we have a prophet who is giving us direction, a greater prophet who's giving us direction to greater wealth and riches in heaven and to everlasting life. So in 3,000 years, that prophet is still talking to us. We still have the prophet speaking to us through the church. The church is the body of Jesus Christ, the prophet. And all the voices by which this church speaks to you is the one that gives us direction. Not direction in how to balance our checkbooks or how to clear our earthly debt, but direction in how God has made us righteous through Christ. God says to his disciples, Anyone who listens to you listens to me. And God has given us his disciples, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, all to speak to us, to give us direction as we come to him asking for help. Give us direction in how our sins are forgiven. The church is directing you to come and confess your sins and be absolved. The church is directing you to the baptismal font where your sins are washed away. The church is inviting you to the altar where we receive that precious body and blood of Christ in the bread and the wine for the forgiveness of our sins and the strength to live a new life. The church is still speaking to you through the prophet Jesus and all the voices, all of your voices, that promise the forgiveness of sins and everlasting life through faith in Jesus Christ. That day, when I was in the car crying and whimpering and calling out to God for help, I had no idea what he was about to do. God, the prophet, was going to speak to me through this congregation. I was going to receive a phone call some weeks later, some months later, by this church asking me to become the pastor here. This was not my idea. God says, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts, my ways are higher than your ways. Well, this certainly wasn't what I thought would be how God would take care of my situation. But amazingly, as I accepted the call, things in my life changed. Suddenly, there was a means through extraordinary gifts of people and loved ones that helped me through and my family through that difficult time. I was eventually able to buy a new AC, able to get our house treated for the termites and fix all the other issues. I was able, like this widow, to take care of my family with all that was left over. You see, like that widow, God was calling me to fill jars. But not jars filled with oil, but jars of clay that God has filled with his treasures from heaven. By sharing with you God's word, 
by sharing with you his promises in the direction of the prophet. God is filling you with his gifts, living water that wells up to eternal life. That is his Holy Spirit and the forgiveness of sins and his promises. The prophet, Jesus, still speaks to us. He speaks to us through the voices of the church, through the call of the church to take up our crosses and to follow Jesus unto the promise of ever life, the forgiveness of sins, and really the wisdom and how to negotiate the world in which we live. That mom who called said to me in brokenness that, you know, pastor, you are the only one I trust. Because in her experience here, she was around people like you in the church. She heard voices of love and support. She knew that the people here would care for her and her need. The church is the prophet and his voices speaking to all of you. Those words of reassurance that God will help you and will give you everlasting life. I often wonder what would have happened if I had not followed the words that I heard when our Savior called me, what my life would be like. So often, the prophet is speaking to us, but we would rather listen to other voices, listen to social media, celebrities, or just our gut instead of listening to the chosen one who God has put in our life to speak to us and direct us. But the prophet does speak to us, and when we listen to him, we find him leading us to the place where we can get direction on how our sins are forgiven. How our sins are forgiven through the words of absolution, they're forgiven by the washing of baptism and through the receiving of the sacrament, the blessing of the altar. God gives us direction and how our debts, the greater debt, is forgiven. Jesus once told a parable. He told a parable of two men who owed, both owed their master denarii. One owed 500 denarii, and the other owed 50 denarii. And Jesus says in the parable that the master forgave both of the debt of those men. And then he asked the question, which do you believe would love the master more? The one with the greater debt, the bigger debt, or the one with the smaller debt? And so the listeners answered, well, obviously the one with the bigger debt. Well, what I want to share with you all today is that Jesus Christ has forgiven the bigger debt. We may owe $93,000 to all of our lenders and donors, but our debt to God was so much greater. But Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, the prophet who speaks to you, forgave the bigger debt. And in forgiving the bigger debt, he has given you bigger promises. He's given you the promise of the forgiveness of sins, but also the promise of everlasting life in his name. Amen. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.